Hey, what's up guys? I'm Ray Torn and welcome to Jagged Alliance 3. I played a little bit uh, up to the point where you take the, the village on the initial starting island. So not incredibly experienced, but I do know the, bas the basics of the game. And we are going to rename this. Let's name it to Praetorian. As far as the difficulty, we're just going to stay on the standard difficulty First Blood. There are more challenging difficulties available, Commando and Mission Impossible. But we'll leave it on the First Blood since I am unfamiliar with the game overall. And as far as the game rules, I think we're going to leave these all on no, though I'm really tempted to change the, the lethal weapons. Because I want my mercs to be able to die, and I'm not entirely sure if with this down state, if they'll eventually die. What I'd assume is that they go down, and then you can bring them back to life. You know, go over there, maybe give them a, a med kit or something like that, and, and bring them back to life. And if you don't do it after a certain amount of time, maybe they bleed out. That's generally the way these games work. But I want the mercs to be able to die. And so I'm not entirely sure if that is how it works, or if, you know, maybe you don't have to go bring them back. They just never die. Uh, which... You know, I could see that being a, an option for this game, because in fact there's only a certain amount of mercenaries. So I'm really tempted to change this, because I do want my mercenaries to be able to die. Kind of force us to use different ones, rather than the same characters all the time. Yeah, whatever. Let's turn it on. How bad could it be, right? Perhaps I'll regret turning this on, particularly because it doesn't say that you can change it, like with this option. So I assume you're stuck with this. But it'll be okay. Let's go and hop on into it. Let you guys read this here. Uh, it is... Somewhat of a sillier game at times, does have some seriousness to it, but there uh, does seem to be a little bit of a lighter tone to it, so do keep that in mind. But yeah, we'll have a little cutscene here after we finish reading this. So here's the AIM recruitment site, and we'll be starting out by recruiting our first mercenaries. So I do recommend that we recruit at least three mercs for the beginning. Uh, we'll probably recruit four here. That's what I did, and I find that if you recruited them more than that, uh, the initial couple maps, uh, they're just not very big. There's not a lot of room to maneuver, uh, and that's probably until you get to that first village area. And so you really don't need more than three or four, uh, just because they, they wouldn't be anywhere for them to, to go and, and hide behind cover. So we'll get uh, three or four people, probably at a similar squad layout to what I got in my little test playthrough. I started with the Hitman here, and that's because he's got this good marksmanship. This is Frank Hitman Hennessy. And he's got the, the good marksmanship, but most importantly, he's got a pretty good leadership. There's not a lot of cheap options available at the start here who have good leadership. And you can hire any of these from the beginning outside in these legendary ones. So you can get the, the higher level ones right from the start, starting at level 4 here. Uh, but you're going to pay for them. Uh, but you notice there is a lot of variance in price, though. Uh, Ivan here 
and uh, Hennessy are both level four and yet quite a bit different in cost. You'll see that several of the veterans are actually more expensive than the elite, so clearly the level is not the only thing considered here. There's a lot of other factors too, like the equipment. You see all the equipment, the perks. So you gotta really look around here and see which options are best for you. You start out with $40,000 here initially, and this cost that we're seeing is only for a week, I believe. Yeah, so seven day fee. Uh, so you gotta pay them, you know, for every day they're, they're working. So you got to keep that in mind, that you're going to have to rehire them a week from here. Let's say we wanted to spend under $10,000 for our initial crew. You can see there's just nobody with high leadership. I suppose you have her. She's a mechanic, and her leadership is almost as good as the Hitman. And the leadership here, I'll show you guys what it does. Actually, I'll just hover over these real quick so you can see exactly what each one of these attributes is used for. So far they all seem pretty important in some capacity. So you probably want a crew that can do a variety of things. But yeah, there's just not a lot of options available that give you the, the leadership. We'll see if we can hire her. She was not available uh, when I was playing last time. And it looks like some of this is random, because Meltdown was available and she's not now. And she's pretty cool, I kinda wanted to hire her again. She's a psycho, which uh, in addition to the, you know, the, the little bonus there, you also get additional conversation options. They'll all talk during the conversations, have their little input that they uh, will add. And I wanted to hire her because she's a, a pretty decent doctor and she's not too expensive. So I think we will. She has the striking looks perk. Then she also is a scoundrel and also adds the conversation options, but the first weapon swap for this turn is free. I got the teaching. You definitely want somebody with the teaching for that experience bonus. She's ambidextrous, which means that she doesn't get that uh, high of a penalty for dual wielding firearms. And she's an opportunistic killer. So I think we'll hire her. Starts with a peacemaker. She's got some meds, first aid kit, and the ammunition. I did not hire a medic uh, my first playthrough here, Fox here. and I regretted it because I didn't have really good at I'm it. Ears. Well, that's not completely true. I have other parts too. So for now, we'll just do the week-long contracts, week -long? but we can to to. change this up. Okay, it's a deal. So yeah, we'll just do the week-long contact uh, contract for our initial characters here. So that'll be our medic. We need somebody who has good mechanical. Uh, this is Cynthia Fox Guzman, she's American. Last time I hired this Pakistani woman, Livewire, she's got pretty good mechanical and also isn't too expensive. They recommend that you hire Bobby Steroid from uh, Poland. But yeah, he's he's got the decent mechanical and he's got the marksmanship on top of it. But I feel like, I mean, he's got the good health, I suppose. But it seems like he's oriented towards you know, unarmed attacks. He's got that steroid smash. I don't, I don't know if you want to, and, and melee attacks because of the, the strength. Yeah, and I haven't really used melee combat at all. So I don't know how effective it is. But I'm not entirely sure if he would be a good character to, to make use of. Now, he does have this uh, bonus here. Accuracy is based on strength instead of dexterity. That seems useful considering his high level of strength and his low dexterity. Yeah, he has the okay mechanical skills. I think we're probably gonna go with live wire again though. I really like that higher mechanical skills for uh, you know a pretty cheap character here. We'll Hello take a look. There. Are you in need of my skills? We'll take a look at her perks here. So she's got the inside dope reveals all enemies if you have intel for the sector. Pretty useful. Uh, scoundrel, so similar to Fox there. Uh, Mister Fixit, and then the Optimist. Small chance to prevent a team morale loss. All right, so now we're going to want somebody who has good explosives. I used Barry Unger before. He's a Hungarian. And uh, probably just use him again. Because he's pretty good. He's also got the Mr. Fix-It. He's uh, spiritual. And he's got the Breach and Clear. Gain free move after throwing grenades or making shotgun attacks. So pretty useful, particularly if you can get him equipped with a shotgun. He doesn't start with one. But he does have these shaped charges here. So yeah, we might want to go ahead and make use of him again. 
Some other options available. Uh, Grunty was another character I used before. We might get him again. So because he has this vanguard with the grit, so that's pretty useful, the extra health. So it really is our kind of soldier here. And we're definitely gonna hire a hitman as well. We haven't done that yet. Hey, Ace. Looks like you got a job for me. So he's another American. Well, looks like we got ourselves a contract. All right, so we'll get him hired. So that's three. So we just need one more. So I guess we won't get Grunty then, the German. Instead, we'll go ahead and get Barry for his explosive skill. And also, he is the cheapest person available as well. This is Barry Oga. This is about job? I have not worked with you. You are unknown to me. I need more money as insurance I stay alive. So he wants more money. Figures, I was just talking about being the cheapest, but yeah, we'll go ahead and pay him. We have reached simul Also Grizzly here. Looks like he doesn't have any special skills here outside of being a marksman. He's a good all-rounder, I guess. Yeah, we got our four members. That's all we need. So let's go ahead and get started. So this is the starting islands, Ernie. But here's the larger map. Now this is a fictional country in Africa, so it probably doesn't, uh, you know, align with anything in real life. And so we'll be landing here. You have to unpause the game, and you'll also do these things called operations. We haven't landed an island yet, so we won't do that. We'll take a look at that soon. So I'm going to unpause it and let our mercs land. And so it is, you know, moving through the time here. You can follow the date, and of course you'll have to pay your troops and all that kind of good stuff. So we've got an unknown number of enemies here. This is our Charlie squad. You can set up different squads. And uh, you can also do auto-resolve. Obviously we're not going to do that. We're just going to go ahead and fight this. And yeah, I believe you have to. Since it's the first mission. Alright, so we start out on this beach here. Get all of our crew selected and get them moving. So we need to make our way over to this house here. And so we'll be moving down the beach and we'll engage in one bout of combat before we get there. So that's gonna be right here, I believe. So what we can do is we can sneak So our troops to squat down. Seems like we're also missing somebody. Oh, she's taking her time getting over here. Is that the fox character? Yeah, that's the fox character. All right, so we'll probably want to set our troops up to set our guys up here to flank them. I, actually, you know, I believe there's somebody over here. Yeah, there's a third guy right here. All right, so let's go ahead and set these guys. Better show myself so they and it looks like combat started, so we didn't get to do the initial attack where we would have, uh, you know, been able to get a surprise bonus. But that's okay, because it does use your AP even if you do the initial attack. All right, so this is a bit different than many games in the genre, as in you don't have the percentage modifiers uh, that you almost always see, you know, in games like this, like XCOM, where you have like the 50% chance to hit or 75% chance to hit or whatever. Which can sometimes be quite infuriating, because uh, you know it says you have a 90% chance to hit and then you miss, and then the enemy will have like a 17% chance and then they hit you, get a critical hit or something like that. This one doesn't have that, which I thought was was interesting. So we click on uh, the enemy, and then we can use right click to use more AP. So this character has 10 AP. I believe that's based off of their dexterity. One of the stats. No, it might not be dexterity. It might be the uh, uh, agility. Instead of me speculating, let me just confirm. Yeah, it's the agility that determines the amount of AP. So if you right click, then you make yourself more accurate, but use more AP. So since we have 10 AP and we'd like to, you know, fire twice, we'll go ahead and use five for each one, make it a higher chance of being accurate. And then you get to choose which part of the body you're gonna hit. And you'll notice there's just no percentages for accuracy. It's just these plus and, and minus signs. Each body part has 
you know, a certain reason for you to, to try and hit him there. The head does the most damage as you'd expect. Also the least accurate though. The arm uh, can result in them getting the inaccurate modifier. So it makes them more inaccurate. Uh, the torso is the easiest thing to hit. You know, if they don't have armor on, of course, but it's just uh, the most, uh, it's the largest target. Uh, so, you know, aim center mass, as we learn in the military. Uh, the groin results in being suppressed because nobody wants to be shot in the groin. Also seems like it does a considerable amount of damage as well. Not really because you got those major arteries there. Uh, and then you got the legs, which do the same amount of damage as the arms and can result in be them being slowed. Uh, so yeah, we're going to go ahead and shoot this guy. We're not close enough. This guy is a marksman, so he might be able to get the headshot. We are going to fire twice, but we're going to aim at center mass. And you see he's already almost dead, so one more hit might do the trick here. Hey, nice there we technique. go. Maybe you can give me some pointers later on. Alright, so that's the end of his turn. Uh, let's go ahead and move Barry in. Well, he's not going to reach. Okay, so we'll move her in then. She has a bit more movement. And then we'll go ahead and attack this guy, and we only have the 4 AP. We're gonna go with the center mass shot again. And she did hit him. 15 damage, he's severely wounded now. Uh, so he'll move a little bit forward. I think we're outside of our range here. Again, we'll use the five AP, trying to make it more likely. And we have a stealth kill bonus here. So we're, uh, they don't know that we're here. So just like that, we've already killed the second guy. So let's see if we can't kill the second, or excuse me, the third guy. Yeah, Barry's a beast. All right, so we didn't even need to use our entire crew for that. So that went pretty well. Yes. So our first bit of loot is here. Now you can just have anybody do the looting. Uh, you see we found a combat knife here. Let's go ahead and give that to, give that to the hitman here. And then we're going to pick up that 12 gauge shot as well. So you can access your inventory by clicking I. This shows you all your squad supplies, like your meds and all your ammunition, which the whole squad will share. But then every squad member has their own backpack as well. How large their backpack is, is determined by their strength. So you see the live wire is the weakest and thus can only carry four things. While Barry and the hitman here have much larger backpacks. Uh, so she has the first aid kits and she's our medic. She's got the PDA here. This allows us for allows us to do the hacking and the locksmith's kit. So that's a major reason why you want to make sure you're getting a mechanical character. And you see the weapons they got equipped and the armor. It looks like the only person currently equipped with armor is the hitman, probably because he's a higher level. He's got that light helmet and the flak armor. So yeah, they all have their own individual equipment here. Hitman Hennessy. So let's go ahead and move on with the story here. Are you Miss Lafontaine's mess? Go on inside. They are expecting. Thank God you made it. I wanted to warn you, but you were already en route. Lijon forces have landed on Ernier. They even tried to attack us here at the villa. I can't imagine what they want with this tiny island. It is neither Ernie Island nor my villa they want. It is you. Perhaps they think capturing you would make your father more cooperative. Then I'm sorry I came. I didn't mean to put anyone else in jeopardy. Have faith. Barry is here. I really think you should place the blame on the enemy and not on yourself. So you see there, each of our teammates have a chance to you know, put, put forward their input. I don't know, also, as we've, we saw with those perks, might unlock some unique dialogue options because you do get to pick what you want to say here, and it does have effects. Uh, so you have a variety of effects based on the way you respond in this uh, dialogue. Uh, so yeah, we're going to say we can handle them. I am so grateful to hear you say that. Grand Chien's own government can't do a thing to help. I am reassured by your confidence. Here. Please take this as a gesture of my appreciation. You're quite welcome. Now, 
as to beginning your search. I suppose questioning the Legion soldiers on Ernie about my father would be a good way for you to start. This is Corazon Santiago. She's the director of operations in Grand Chien for the Adonis Corporation. Her people encountered the Legion face to face. She will manage additional funding while you are in the field. Hello, it is good to meet you. As Emma said, I will provide you with a cut of the proceeds from the Adonis Diamond Mines to help fund your mission as you liberate each one from Legion control. Whole mines full of diamonds? Well, now you've got this girl's attention. If I am being completely honest, this would not be the first time I have liberated diamonds. But first things first. The Legion has overrun the island, capturing the town and the old fortress. Liberating the town is essential to securing transport to the mainland, but securing the old island will ensure you have a good base of operations. Additionally, the locals may be appreciative and give useful intel. Led by a man calling himself the Major, it is the largest paramilitary group in the region. They seized all our diamond mines before my security teams could respond. They are brutal bullies, but not smart or well-trained. They should be no match for professional soldiers. Our training is of exceeding professional. We will be victorious. Perhaps the biggest warlord in Grand Chien. Not much is known about him, except that he runs the Legion like a cult of personality. He is both worshipped and feared. It's likely you'll have to deal with him directly in order to rescue my father. If he's dreaming of being a god, he's about to get a real wake-up call. This island is isolated and defensible, and will serve as a good launch point for missions into the Ajani River Valley. The people here are docile, but resourceful. Help them, and they'll help you. I like this. It is the Christian thing to do. Some may prove more helpful than others, I'm sure. But you should talk with as many of them as you can. They may have information that could be of use to you. Please excuse me. I must take this. Yes. No! Just tell them to wait! Just tell them to wait, goddammit! <clears throat> My apologies. Where were we? Who was that? It was... Well, it was nothing that concerns your mission. It was simply, uh, certain logistical issues that require my attention from time to time. Again, I apologize. Do you have any further questions for us? Good luck. Corazon and I will be keeping in touch via radio. We should take a closer look at this. Yeah, I do not trust that Santiago woman. I just feel like she's a villain. She comes across as a villain. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and try hacking this here. And you'll notice that it wants us to hack it with the Hitman. It seems to be random, or maybe it's picking the, the character that's closest, uh, which is not the way it should be done. They really should base it off of which character would be best at that, because sometimes you'll click on a character, or you'll click on something, and it'll pick the wrong character, and it'll say that character doesn't have the skill to do it rather than selecting the character that would have the skill to do it, so kind of strange. But yeah, when I first went through here, I didn't want to, to hack that because it seems like you probably shouldn't hack somebody's computer while they're standing right there, uh, somebody you're working for. And we do not have everybody selected here. But yeah, it seems they do not care. Uh, we can also examine things and just get a little extra information here. But yeah, like we said that one option, and I wonder I don't know if we can get in here. No, we cannot open it. I wonder if she offered us the money because, you know, we sounded confident, as she said, or if you would have always got offered that money, regardless of what you had said there. But then you could have turned it down, not sure what that would have resulted in. You just lose the money, but... No, we are mercs, so it makes sense that we would want to get paid. Alright, so I believe we just moved to the next area now. That's the last thing we had to do here. And we'll be going back up to the sector map. So you can move through that way. You can also move up here by just clicking on the area you want to go to. Uh, if an area has enemies, then you do have to clear them out. And so we'll be uh, fighting this. This looks like it's uh, six enemies total. 
Got a sniper and five goons. The sniper are kind of challenging. I found when I did this the first time, he caused me a little bit of damage there. I wasn't in a good position to take him out, and he's very accurate, as you'd expect. So oh, we need to get everybody sure selected here. Hopefully my mechanical keyboard isn't too annoying for you guys. I know some people don't like it on my other series. I am looking in the, to change it up. The reason why I keep this keyboard is because it allows me to switch the arrow keys with the WASD keys, which is pretty important for certain games that don't don't uh, use WASD, like Hearts Bar and Poor. And so that's the reason why I use this mechanical keyboard. Uh, but for games where this isn't a problem, I could always switch up if I had another keyboard. So I'm thinking about doing that for games like this. But I know some people don't like the sounds of it. Alright, so they're teaching us about uh, the stealth kill and sneaking. Let me see where we're at here. Alright, so the enemy is over here. We're actually going to go ahead and wrap around. Go the other way. And yeah, we'll do... We'll do some sneaking. And we'll also go ahead and get... All this stuff. So we get the meds. That'll be helpful. And then these herbs here. Alright, so what we're going to want to do is go ahead and split these characters up and see if I can't get one to wrap all the way around here and get over to this rock without getting caught. As far as which one, uh, we might want to take a look and see who's our sneaky characters that we currently have. And so this is going to be based off of the, well, both the dexterity and the agility, since the agility determines how stealthy they are and the dexterity determines their aiming for the stealth kill chance. So both of those are pretty important here. And it's probably going to be Barry, but we'll go ahead and go through these real quick. But yeah, he's got the 7387. Oh, maybe not. Looks like Fox, our medic, has very high stats in both of those areas. But do we want to put our medic out there like that? We'll just use them both for sneaking around, I suppose. Let me see what uh, skill shield has. Okay, yeah, none of these really... I guess there's this. When she opens combat, enemies become surprised instead of aware. Okay. And she retains the AP from the opening attack, which I had noted uh, a little bit earlier that, you know, they still use that AP, but that's not the case with her. So she's clearly designed to be a, a more stealth-based character. So you know what? We'll go ahead and bring her forward then. Once they're done talking, they're going to start roaming around, so we need to hurry up and get over here before they do that. So we're going to bring this character here, and then let's go ahead and bring Barry in as well. Oh. Alright, so we might just shoot him here. Yeah, let's just go ahead and shoot him, make sure that we get the bonus. And you notice that they do have flak vests on. Well, let's make sure we hit this guy, because we're going to go for a headshot. All right, we did 24 damage there and killed him. All right, so he's firing off in the air. I'm surrounded. And <laughs> he did find Fox as well. Uh, we can make use of our characters in any order. Here's our morale right over here. See a rat, but yeah, he did reveal Fox and now he's in a, a bad position. So having her here is actually gonna work out pretty well for us. So we're gonna go for the headshot and he's dead. All right, so that went quite nicely. So let's see if we can't hit him now. All right, so you can see that you can only go for the torso shot because everything else is obstructed, which means we want to hit him. So you notice the damage there says zero. Now the reason why you can still fire it is because you could do damage to the thing there. There is destructible environments. We're probably not going to destroy that tree with our gun here. Uh, you know, we could throw an explosive over there, maybe destroy the tree. But with certain things, you can shoot them and then destroy them. So that's one reason to to maybe still shoot, uh, even if you're not going to hit anything. Uh, but we can hand hit the torso. He's got a flak vest. Uh, we'll go ahead and try that. So let's go ahead and actually increase the amount of AP we're investing here and just kind of finish this up. Just to make sure we hit him. So he's now severely wounded. All right, so let's go ahead and bring some other people forward. Uh, did he use all his? He just about used it all. Uh, so let's go and bring the hitman in. Uh, doesn't look like he's going to make it over there. The use of the left and right clicks I wish could be adjusted 
to a degree. There's there's one adjustment you can make, but that's not the one I'm, I would like to make. Uh, let's see. Probably not going to reach with the... Yeah, I think this guy isn't going to get that far, so it really doesn't matter. We can do it anyway, but... Doesn't uh, really matter. Let's put her over here. And then go ahead and enter turn. Yeah, basically the only thing you really use the right click for outside of... Oh, he hit Fox. Surprised I didn't think you'd be able to hit her from there. Outside of uh, changing the amount of AP you're investing for the shot to make it more accurate, uh, when you move around, you know, outside of combat, you use the right click to move, and then the left click is for everything else. I kind of wish that left click was for selecting and right click was for, you know, giving out actions, uh, but it's generally not like that. Left clicks for most everything. And you can change it so that moving around uh, the map outside of combat is also uh, utilizes the left click. Yeah, I wish I could change it differently. Oh, we got another goon over here. Well, that's interesting. He must have came from over there because I recall only fighting... Oh, you know what? He was brought on the bridge. I recall fighting only three last time I did this. At this area, anyway. Alright, so let's go ahead and increase our AP invested here and do another torso shot. All right, we did hit him. He's not dead, but let's go and do another shot here. All right, so he's almost dead. If we can just get another shot on him. So let's go ahead and see if Barry can hit him. Probably not. Maybe. We'll try. All right, so he's saying he's not going to hit. So let's go ahead and bounce all our AP in here. See if that'll be enough. Yeah, he didn't hit. All right, you do have ammunition you have to manage. So most of these characters are just using the 9mm, which you have quite a bit of, uh, if we just looked at. Oh, that's the wrong one. We need to look at the inventory screen here. You see, we got a lot of 9mm ammunition, and also the 44s for those Peace Bringers. So ammunition isn't a problem early on here for these weapons, but later it will be an issue. Yeah, maybe I should have moved her out of there since she's clearly exposed. So he's still hidden. Okay, and so is she. So we have not fired with them yet. And so we still get those hidden bonuses. Alright, so we're going to leave these guys where they're at. I don't think there's any point in doing the overwatch yet, because they're just not close enough. They're going to sit here and fire at Fox instead. So she's definitely in a more exposed position. But they are missing. Missing seems to be a major part of this game, which makes sense. Uh, I feel like... Oops. Wanted yeah, to increase the accuracy there, but it doesn't matter. He's dead. That's what matters. Uh, and then we can go ahead and invest more AP into trying to ensure we hit this guy. In fact, I don't think we're going to go after a headshot. There we go. Alright, excellent. So they're all dead now. more creeps out there just staring at me. Sneaking up. But there are... I think three over here in this village that we needed to take out. And that's where the sniper is. Now nobody is seriously injured. Let's see how we want to do this. Probably go up through this way. Yeah, let's go up here. Of course. Sure. Here may there be useful items. I think we might need to get up and then go back down again here. Alright, so we'll see how the best way to approach this is going to be. We do have that knife. I don't know if... Let me see who has that knife. I don't recall who I gave it to. Uh, we gave it to Hitman. I'm not entirely sure if that would be like a stealth attack. If you just like, you know, uh, flung the knife at him, if that would kill him. I'm not entirely sure how that would work. Sure thing. Maybe we should give the knife to uh, our... Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Let's instead give the knife to Fox. I want to test this out. So let's get all these other characters set up where we want them. All right, I'm going. How can I assist? See, he is aware to at least some degree. Don't tease me. You just like watching me walk. Alright, so we're going to use her, like oh, and it looks like we were discovered. Alright, that's unfortunate. Because the sniper's over there, and uh, yeah. <laughs> I 
He can do some serious damage to us. Oh, looks like he's right there. Hitman Hennessy. That him? Yeah, I believe that's the sniper there. Maybe there's only two up here? That's what it looks like. Alright, so let's go ahead and get Hitman firing at him first. He does have a free move here. He's also focus. He deals more damage and gains grit at the end of the turn. Good as gone, it's one of his ace. bonuses. So we're going to go ahead and use another AP here. And you can see that the headshot would be obstructed while the torso shot is armored. Could go for an arm shot to make it more inaccurate. Yeah, we'll do that. There we go. And so he'll get that inaccurate modifier, so don't really need to shoot him again in the arm. Let's go ahead and do a torso shot. And took him out. I really think that was completely hot. So we need to get the sniper dealt with. And that is going to be more difficult because we got a lot of territory we got to cross here, don't we? Alright, let's see how the best way to go about doing Hello, this would be. Please don't shoot me! Please don't shoot me! So bring her over here. That's all of her AP. Let's bring her here. And she's got four AP, doesn't really matter because it's not gonna he's not gonna run over you. He's just gonna sit there and fire at us. Yeah, there's nowhere else. Well, I guess that's covered. Yeah, we'll go there. And we'll move this guy. Let's see how we want to do this. Yeah, no matter what he's gonna be revealed there, so we're gonna have to go here. So we don't want to put him out here in the open. Now we can go down into prone. But then it takes AP to get back up. Whoever he decides to start firing at, that's the character we want to put in prone. Uh, let's go and enter turn here. Again, he's not going to run forward. He's just going to shoot. I think there's just one left, Ace. Oh. He didn't fire. I think he marked her. Yeah, I think that's what happened. He like, marked her. So let's go ahead and have her lay down at prone. Since I believe that means he's going to fire on her next. And so let's move... We're going to move right here. When is my 15 minute break? Now, we could attempt to fire at him. I don't think it's a high chance of hitting with the current weapon that we have. But we already know he's likely going to fire at her. So, I mean, we can try. So everything but the head is obstructed. Okay, so let's just use all of our AP here and try and get a headshot. And we missed. Not surprising. A little bit too far out here. Hello. All right, so we're gonna use all this guy's AP here to go Moving right here. Destination. And he'll just have to go ahead and end his turn. Hey, man, we'll try and bring him forward, I suppose. Get there. Like the little roll there. <laughs> I could try and shoot him. Very unlikely that we're going to hit him because he's out of range and crouched, but why not? Yeah. I mean, of course, you got ammunition, so I guess that's one reason why not, but it's fine. So, yeah, even though she was prone, he still hit her. So, she is not doing well now. And you can see some of that destructible environment there. And, yeah, this guy's challenging. Now, there's nowhere for us to really... Get a good shot on him. We have agreement. So we'll go over here. We'll see if we can shoot him. Alright, so this would just be like, uh, yeah, just trying to shoot the head is the only thing we can attempt to hit and it'd be a grazing hit. Could instead do the Overwatch. Yeah, I think we might try that. It says it interrupts attacks as well, not just movement. Because it's a uh, move or shoot. So let's do the overwatch. Yes. And then we really need to get her out of there. If you think it's a good idea. So bring her over here. And then if we can, we'll... Yeah, she laid right back down. So we'll leave her laid down. And, uh, you know, he's got that rifle, though. So he can probably still hit her. All right, and then... We can try and hit from here. Alright, so not likely to hit, but let's actually close this in a little bit and see if we can get a hit there. Ah, really we grazed him. The 
And I'll bring this guy in over here. And let me have him go prone since we can't fire on him. Alright, so that's our turn. So we fired on him, but uh, not likely to hit here. So he's going after Hitman now. And he missed. Alright, excellent. So let's go ahead and bring Barry in a little bit closer. So he is exposed now. And so hopefully we should get a good shot here in the torso. And we missed. Could have did a headshot as well. He's got that hat on. I don't see how that's really protection against a bullet, but apparently it is. Yeah. Alright, so what we might want to do is have somebody provide... Yeah. Let me see, where's this guy at here? She probably can't do it. Let's see if he can reach with the overwatch. He can. Alright, so let's have him provide the overwatch since it looked like that was effective. And we're just gonna leave her over here because clearly uh, she's not in a good position. So we're just gonna leave her here. Uh, she can't bandage herself up, I suppose, since she does have uh, the health kits. Yeah, why not? This is the first time I've used that. And we're gonna bring this guy. She won't build a fire. We'll bring her over here. All right, I'm going. They are all over me. Yeah, so we don't have the AP to, to fire currently. But yeah, you know, I didn't bring... I didn't pay for a medic when I first started, so I didn't have the medic. Ah, I missed. Yeah, this one to the crowd. I think he's going to hit that guy. Oh, he marked him. Okay. So we should be able to get this guy killed, hopefully with our two characters fairly close at this point. So we're going to go for those torso shots. A little bit of fire twice. So hopefully... Oops, we should have increased our accuracy there, but it's fine. He's almost dead, so hopefully live wire will be able to finish him up. Uh, maybe not. She keeps uh, firing these inaccurate shots here. There we go. All right, so it didn't go too bad there. Could have been worse. Of course, we did take a little bit of damage there with Fox. Should be aight. Oh, what an adorable little look. Let me pick it. I insist. So yeah, live wire should have been pickpocketing that, or excuse me, picking that lock, but she did not. All right, so we got ourselves an AK-47, and so we're gonna want to. Probably put this on. Barry's our explosive expert. Could go ahead and put it on to Hitman, but I'd prefer to give him a rifle if we can find one. I mean, we can give it to Barry. Yeah, we'll give it to Barry. And then we'll have him switch out his weapon. Oh, we don't have any ammunition yet. We didn't grab that. My bad. And we should have got ammunition for that. That was 7.62. But uh, for whatever reason, he's not uh, registering that we have it. So let me go ahead and switch again. There we go. Alright, so we got 14 rounds for that. That's it. And let's see what else is there to access here. Salvage those parts. And then we'll hack this. Which gets us $750. And then over here we'll get these parts. And it looks like that is all. Okay. With certainty. So there's more stuff up here. So let's go ahead and get sure everybody moving over here. While Barry comes over here and loots this for us. Maybe. Come on, buddy. Alright, so he's going back up to loot that. Alright, so we found a stick grenade. We're going to give all of our explosives. I guess we'll just put it into his backpack for now. Oh, we can't do that because he's too far. I see. So we'll just keep it there. And then we'll also want to get the wire cutters, which I suppose we can put into Livewire's backpack. 
And we'll wait till Barry finishes his looting. What's on your mind? Got it. Looks like some more stuff over here for us to get. Alright, so that's the rifle. I knew we got a rifle somewhere. So we're gonna give that to Hitman. Of course he's too far, so we'll have to give it to Barry for now. Alright, so Barry, come on over here. I am in movement. And we'll get all this stuff looted. And then I believe we're done with this area of the map. And it's probably gonna be the last thing we're able to do in today's episode as well. I suppose we can travel to the next location and take a look at the operations since we have an injured teammate here. With certainty. So let's get this guy looted. Uh, so we got a new pistol. So this is the same one that many of our people are equipped with, but they have the, uh, the durability. So just keeping this is, is going to be helpful. All right, and then we also got ourselves a crowbar, so we're going to get that equipped, and then, of course, we're going to take the stick grenade. I guess we're going to put it in his backpack, and then we'll take the rifle and give that to the hitman. And then this can go into the squad supplies. All right, so I think that's everything. Oh, there's another grenade over here. That's right. So we'll give that to Barry as well. Yeah. All right, so let's go and move on over to the next area, the Emerald Coast here. And so we'll be traveling over to there. And there's no enemies here, so we don't have to to do a battle. There's also no enemies over in this area, so we'll move over there as well. Now it says we can go here. Oops. Uh, to this underground sector here. I didn't do that in my test playthrough. So we can see over here that two of our characters, Livewire and Fox, are tired, and of course Fox is also wounded. And so now we can go ahead and make use of operations. So these are the ones that are available. Uh, these are contact sensitive based on the area you're in. Uh, so if you're in a village, you have different options like you'll be able to do R&R &R or whatever. So treating wounds, this isn't completely necessary. You can just have them rest. Uh, treating wounds will make use of your meds to do it faster. And uh, then resting is how you get rid of the tired here. So no matter what, we're gonna have to do that. And so what we're gonna do is let's go ahead and scout the area with Barry while Fox and Livewire rest. I have initiated work on this and that's going to take 13 hours and 45 minutes. And could have... And we don't want Livewire to, to repair anything. Could also train Mercs. And so you could have Hitman train up one of these characters here due to his leadership skill. We're not going to do any of that right now. Let's just do the recon and let these characters rest up here. And I wanted to let them rest before we healed her up just in case it heals itself. Alright, so we did finish up that operation. Or it looks like he's still doing that. They're just no longer tired. Alright, so we gathered intel. I am ready for these areas here. And this tells us what we need to do to get rid of the shields and make it easier. So deal with Bastion and his family. There's a big weapon stash in the old bunker under the rust, so that's here. And DD at the Emerald Coast is supplying the Legion with explosives. So let's go ahead and heal up Fox before we do anything else. And we'll just have Fox heal herself. I think it's not quite as efficient for them to heal themselves. So it might be better. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure if you should have somebody with better healing skill do themselves, or if it would be better to have somebody else do it. We'll try this out. It's going to be the same amount of uh, of uh, resources here. The question is how long it takes. So it's going to be one day and eight hours. So let's try it the other way and see which one's more efficient. Because I'm curious. So Fox was to heal herself, so it'd be one day and three hours. So her skill seems to be more important. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and start it. I will give this task all the love it deserves. 
Already scouted. Uh, repairing, we could have live wire repair or something. Let's take a look at our items. Uh, because the AK-47 needs to be repaired. Uh, I suppose we can also repair this rifle. Might as well. That's going to take 9 hours and 30 minutes. So, let's go ahead. We don't need to do that one. Just want to start that. And then we'll work on this while letting these two rest up. And once I complete that objective, once she heals up, and you see our contract is already coming up to expire here. I thought it was good for us to go and rest up, make sure their maximum HP isn't being reduced at all. And that nobody's tired. Alright, so now that everybody's rested up, we'll probably want to go into this underground sector in the beginning of the next episode. And then I think we're going to do the village here. So we're going to retake the entire village. So we'll do that next. And then the last thing we'll do is this more difficult location, this outpost here. And by then we should have gotten rid of some of these shields here. Uh, but yeah, that's going to be the end of today's episode. Again, it's a pretty interesting game. I'm, I'm liking it so far. Uh, this is right up my alley. I enjoy this type of uh, game. And I haven't really ran into any bugs or anything just yet either. Uh, but yeah, so far I'm enjoying it. I hope you enjoyed this first episode as well. If you did, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. If you're looking for anything else to watch, then go check out the front page of our channel. we got a ton of different videos, all sorted by genre, do play a lot of strategy games, uh, particularly here on PC. Uh, if you look at the console strategy games where we play on the PlayStation 5, then you'll see my wife and co-host will join me on those. Uh, the Aliens Dark Descent is one of those co-hosted series. In my PC solo series, I generally only play strategy games, but on console, we play quite a few different, different genres. Uh, so you should be able to find something that you enjoy watching if you liked this episode. Uh, if you're looking for any links, check out the description of any of our videos. Find links to our PayPal, Patreon, and Teespring store if you'd like to help support the channel. You also have a link to our Discord if you'd like to join our community. And finally, you'll find links to all of our social media if you'd like to follow us on those. So I do hope to see you guys on episode two, and thanks for watching.